Good morning and welcome to the workshop. I need to start working on the axle boxes soon, but today is not that day. I still have two sets of complementary components that need to be fabricated before I get started. And those are the spring plates and the springs themselves. One extra thing in that box of bits was a full set of articles and drawings for the locomotive, so I'm pretty pleased with. And just here, you can see the spring plates. So they are 1 8 of an inch thick, 3 8 of an inch wide, and about an inch and a sixteenth, I think, um, long. What you can see here is the usual setup for marking things out, and here we go. This is this piece of metal was actually one of the spare horn stay blanks that we didn't need because we made our own ahead of time. You can see I've marked out the width here, which is three eighths, and I've gone in by twenty seven thirty seconds from the edge of each. This middle section here is going to be waste; that's going to be cut. I think the first thing we need to do though is get them down to width. I think these are currently 5 eighths and they actually only need to be 3 eighths. So let's get that done first. Okay, so since that last little bit of machining, uh, I'm down, I'm, I'm now leveled to take off the, uh, the final cut. But the surface finish hasn't been great. It's not terrible, but it, I think it could be better. So what I've done is using the tips from John's workshop, I've tightened up the gibs on both axes of the table. Um, I think actually I could probably do with loosening this one. This was a bit tight. Um, I also need to do it on the, the vertical, um, the knee, sorry. I've also got the jam nut in here. So let's see what kind of surface finish we get. Um, wheeling the table back and forth when I'm measuring, there's a bit of wobble, but that's really because the table is at maximum extension and it's just not very stable there. Uh, but I am missing two grub screws uh, for, the, for the dovetail gibs. Uh, one for the, um, this axis and one for uh, fore and aft, so to speak. So if anyone has any uh, any ideas on what thread they are or um, where to get them, please let me know because I need to buy at least two. And I think what I might end up doing is if if I figure out what they are, is just replace all of them because they're all a bit knackered. Um, yeah, let me know if you know, that'd be great. This is a setup much like we saw for the horn stays. I have a stop here, and I have a little buffer piece in the middle because my stop doesn't reach all the way across. Uh, and these are the spring plates. So I am going to just mill off the ends of these and then replace them one by one uh, so I get them all to the, exactly the same thickness. I'll take it. Right, having got the edges all cut down to the same length, using a half inch end mill, I then know that the distance between the edge and the spindle must be the radius of the end mill, so a quarter inch. So I know if I move the table across this way by a quarter of an inch, the center of the spindle will be on the edge of the pot. I can then move in by 219 thou, which is 730 seconds, to place me exactly over my scribed mark here. I did need to do traditional edge finding on this side, but one less operation, one less set of changing the bits and bobs. I was quite pleased with that, really. What you can see here is a piece of 3 8 inch mild steel. I need to turn down a mandrel on here to 191 thou and then I need to drill and tap it and after that I'll be parting it off. So let's get started. Right, that's excellent, we're just under 
191, which will be the size of the drilled hole. Now I need to part this off. Doesn't matter how wide we do it really, it's just a, just a jig. But before we do that, we need to drill and tap this hole to take a fixing bolt. I've actually just realized this uh, spigot needs to be the thickness of the workpiece, which is one eighth of an inch, plus the thickness of the uh, ball uh, of the roll. <clears throat> I've just realized that this spigot needs to be a bit longer. It needs to be the thickness of the workpiece, which is an eighth of an inch, and then it needs to be the thickness of the roller on the other side. Currently, it's only um, three sixteenths, or just over three sixteenths, I guess, um, but it needs to be more like uh, a quarter inch. Right, it's now 258 thou, which gives me 8 thou to uh, slop when it's rolling on the, uh, the piece of plate, which I think should be enough to ensure that it doesn't go crazy, uh, but it's uh, relatively held in there. I'm now gonna tap this uh, 6BA, actually, because I've got some 6BA bolts, uh, which is what's gonna hold on the other cap, which is gonna slide over this mandrel. Now we can use that hole to drill number 11. We need to go in at least, well, we need, we need a, a, a clear uh, bore of number 11 drill size all the way through. So I'm, although the work, work piece only needs to be an eighth of an inch, I'm gonna go a quarter of an inch in. There we go, that's uh, the two halves of our filing guide done. So here is the, ro the filing roller gauge in the hole. There's a little bit of play in it, but that's totally fine. We want it to move like this. And the idea is now that I can file around this corner and as the file contacts this roller piece, it will just lift and move the file so the file won't be digging into the metal underneath. Um, it's taken me a little while to make this, and I've never tried hardening something before. So I think what I'm going to do is use it without hardening, and then afterwards I'm going to harden it and see if it works and if it distorts and, and all that good stuff. So, let's get on with it. Right, so I'm going to repeat that all over, and uh, when I'm done, I'll get back to you. There are the spring plates, now for the springs. Annoying little addendum to this, and I'm being honest, is that I tried placing the spring pins and the spring plates into here, and as you can see, they don't fit. And I'm really bummed out by that, and I'm not sure how it happened, but the holes on this are 30 thou further apart than these. So that means that I need to move these holes either inwards by about 16 thou, or increase the diameter of them by 30 thou. 30 thou is a 30 second, and this is exactly bang on 3 sixteenths, although it was a number 11 drill. So I should be able to drill this, uh, I think 7 30 seconds, and we should basically be back in action. And that will also give a little bit of play, like I mentioned last time, for the spring pins to, to move in other directions to follow the uh, roll of the track. 
either way, that's super annoying. I don't know how that happened. 